In 1978 or 79, depending on which part of the world you're in, George A. Romero's zombie masterpiece Dawn of the Dead came out, a sequel to his independent 1968 movie Night of the Living Dead. Dawn of the Dead sees the zombie outbreak continue, where once again they are hungry for humans, and will stop at nothing to try and chow down on a human Happy Meal. The story focuses on a crew of a news station, Stephen, aka Flyboy, and his pregnant girlfriend Fran, whom join forces with SWAT officers Peter and Roger, where they flee the chaos around them in a helicopter, where they seek shelter at a shopping mall, which provides them all the resources they need for survival, while they must also avoid the blood-hungry zombies. Throughout this movie, we go on a journey with our likeable heroes, where we see them try to live their lives in the zombie apocalypse, where they become like a small family doing its best to survive, where they not only have to deal with the undead, but also a bikey gang who want them all for themselves. In this classic movie which has more action and humour than its predecessor, with some even claiming it to be a satire on mindless consumerism. Yep, Dawn of the Dead has it all. So, I have my Dawn of the Dead vinyl soundtrack. Yes, this is what the soundtrack looked like. And of course, I have my Dawn of the Dead lunchbox. There's something in here. Oh, look, it's a chomp bar. Well, isn't that just typical? There always has to be a random chomp bar that just turns up, doesn't there? So with that, 10 things that you didn't know about Dawn of the Dead. Let's check it out. Because if we don't, I'll be really upset. Number 10. The Dawn started with a trip to a shopping mall. It's 1968, and George A. Romero's ultra-low budget independent movie Night of the Living Dead comes out. It's a surprise hit, bringing in $30 million on a budget that was in the hundreds of thousands. Night of the Living Dead also lit a spark with the public's fascination and interest in the zombie genre. Romero had intended on making a sequel, but at first he doesn't. Instead, he puts it off and decides to wait, as he doesn't want to be typecast as a horror director. So he would go on to direct several alternative movies, like a 1971 romantic comedy called There's Always Vanilla, and a science fiction movie called The Crazies in 1973. However, the seeds of Dawn of the Dead were sown on one fateful day in 1974, when Romero was invited to visit the Monroeville Mall in Pennsylvania. Ramiro was invited by his friend, who was part of a real estate firm that managed the mall. Ramiro was given a tour and shown all the hidden back rooms of the mall, where his friend told him that should a disaster or any kind of apocalypse occur, then people could seek shelter in a shopping mall and survive there. I mean, he's not wrong, after all. Look at all the resources that they would have access to. Naturally, this is a fun and exciting premise. And I mean, who wouldn't want their own shopping mall at their disposal? And the setting is also an interesting contrast from Night of the Living Dead, where the action was restricted to a small farmhouse. Romero teamed up with producer Richard P. Rubenstein and got to work on writing a script. Number 9. Dawn of the Dead became an Italian production. So Romero and Rubenstein were ready to move forward with their Living Dead sequel and to get this beast made. Only there was one major issue. No studio wanted to invest in it. Yeah, for some reason, no one wanted to back up this production, despite the fact that the original Night of the Living Dead made good profit. However, salvation did come, all the way from Italy. Namely, famed director Dario Argento, who is often known as the master of horror, having directed several horror movie classics like Suspiria and Inferno. Argento heard about the development of Dawn of the Dead, and he reached out to Romero, and he offered to fund the movie, for if anything, just because he was a fan of Night of the Living Dead, and really wanted to see the sequel get made. The conditions were, Argento would get full international distribution rights of Dawn of the Dead, and thankfully, Romero agreed. 
In fact, Argento was so excited about Dawn of the Dead, he even invited Romero to stay in Rome while he was writing the script, so Romero could have a peaceful change of scenery while writing. And during the writing process, Romero and Argento would often exchange ideas to help put the story together. And so, one exotic trip to Italy later, and Romero had penned a true horror movie classic. Number 8. Filming Location Incidentally, the shopping mall that was used for Dawn of the Dead was the Monroeville Mall in Pennsylvania. The very mall that Romero visited which gave him the idea of Dawn of the Dead. And Romero was able to use the mall on the account of his as mentioned friend whose company managed it. Filming had started in November 1977, and Romero and the crew were given free range to use the mall every night when the mall closed down. So filming would take place between 11pm to 7am. Whenever the mall's automatic music would start playing in the morning was always a sign to wrap up filming, on the account that supposedly no one knew how to turn the damn thing off. And often if there was a scene that involved lots of blood and gore, it'll all have to be cleaned up before shoppers would arrive. What didn't help is the fact that the movie was shot over the Christmas period. It was decided that it would be too time consuming for the crew to remove all the mall's Christmas decorations before filming and then put them all back up after filming. So for three weeks over the Christmas period, filming had shut down. To which Romero used the break to edit some footage that had already been shot. Filming however would recommence in early January 1978 and the shoot wrapped up in February of that year. Other parts of the movie that weren't set in the mall were filmed around locations in Monroeville. And a lot of the extras seen in the movie were actually enthusiastic locals who were participating because they were really keen and excited to help make the movie. This proved helpful given the movie's budget of a mere $640,000. Interestingly, the gun store scene in the movie wasn't part of the Monroeville Mall, but it was filmed at a gun store in Pittsburgh, and the scene was edited with other mall footage to give off the illusion that it was part of the mall. In recent years, I've seen photos and footage of the Monroeville Mall by enthusiastic fans who have visited the location, and it looks very different now to how it did back in 1978. Well, I guess that makes sense. 1978 was a long time ago. A lot is bound to have changed in an over 40 year time span. Number 7. Horror Movie Makeup Genius when it came to the makeup effects of the movie, none other than the legendary Tom Savini came on board to help bring the zombies to life for Dawn of the Dead. Savini was actually offered to work on the previous movie, Night of the Living Dead, but he couldn't as he was drafted to the Vietnam War, which he actually felt helped to influence his craft. Savini had previously done makeup effects for Romero's previous movie, Martin, in 1977, and after Dawn of the Dead, he would go on to provide the makeup effects for Friday the 13th in 1980, where he would really get a reputation for being a master of his craft. Despite the fact that over the years, many fans have felt that the zombies in Dawn of the Dead look like they have blue skin, Savini has maintained that the zombies were grey, but during the filming, their grey makeup would end up with a blue tint. Savini supposedly wasn't happy with the blood scene in the movie, feeling that it looked too bright red and fake. But director George A. Romero was actually really happy with this more cartoonish looking blood, as he wanted Dawn of the Dead to be more comedic and humorous, and to have more of a comic book vibe and feel. So although Savini wasn't happy with some of the gore and blood effects, it was actually a win for Romero. I mean, after all, there's not that many zombie movies out there that features zombies having cream pies shoved into their faces. Going full Three Stooges style. And what's with the guy who randomly decided to get his blood pressure checked during the zombie rampage? If you do stupid stuff like that, then you deserve to get it during a zombie apocalypse. And yeah, I think it works, as Dawn of the Dead does have more of a fun and exciting and often humorous comic book feel about it, unlike Night of the Living Dead, which is darker and straight up horror. Number 6. Dangerous Stunts When it came to the filming, the budget couldn't actually afford any stunt performers, but thankfully Tom Savini and his friend Tarso Stavrakis performed all the stunts required for the film. What helped is that both Savini and Stavrakis would actually play characters in the movie. For example, Savini played one of the bikey gang members. 
This is all well and good, but it did lead to some pretty close scrapes. For example, Savini leapt over the hand railing in one shot, but half of his body missed the protective boxes that were waiting for him at the bottom, which were there to soften his fall. But thankfully he was okay, but the incident could have caused him to break his back. And Stavrakis crashed into the ceiling in a shot where he was supposed to slide on a banner. And these weren't the only hiccups to happen during the filming, as a lot of the zombie extras would often get drunk at a bar which was located at the mall, according to IMDb. And on one occasion, these drunk extras stole a golf cart and crashed it into a marble pillar, which cost $7,000 in damages. Wow, Dawn of the Dead? More like Dawn of the Deadly Golf Cart. And a lot of the bikies seen in the movie were real life bikies from the Pagans Motorcycle Club, and the bikes that were used were their own. So seeing how we're halfway through the video, this is a halftime segment called The Horror Movie Mask Collection, where I'll give you a brief tour of my masks. Now, not all of them are horror related. There is gonna be some superhero and Star Wars themed masks, and I'll throw in some helmets for good measure. Let's check it out. So, let's get back to the video. Number five, two different scores collide. When it came to scoring Dawn of the Dead, George A. Romero got stock music from the D-Wolf Music Library, where several stock songs and sounds were used to create the soundtrack. These include the comical shopping mall music, which is actually a tune called The Gonk. However, when Dario Argento came to releasing his version of the movie in the parts of the world where he was personally distributing it, he used the services of Italian rock band Goblin, who created the scores for other Argento movies. And to be honest, they create a pretty unique and rocking soundtrack, like the tune which is played when the main characters are driving around in the trucks. That piece of music is actually called La Caccia, and it would actually go on to be recycled for other zombie horror movies. Dario Argento himself is also credited as composing the score, as he worked with Goblin to create the music. However, Goblin were actually incorrectly credited as The Goblins, 
Which, although must have been annoying, is actually kind of funny. Sorry. When Ramiro heard the score that Goblin had composed, he actually incorporated some of the music into one of his own cuts that he was putting together, making the score for that cut something of a hybrid of stock music that he chose and Goblin's efforts. So which music do I think is better? Well, I like them both the same, and I think they both complete the movie, as I can't see Dawn of the Dead without the comical shopping mall music, but likewise I also can't see it without the kick-ass tunes provided by Goblin. It's like both different music efforts complete the movie and make it its own unique experience. Number 4, Alternative Ending. So we all know the classic ending of Dawn of the Dead. Steven, aka Flyboy, played by David M.G., gets transformed into a zombie and killed. Where Peter, played by Ken Forey, and Fran, played by Galen Ross, escape the mall via helicopter, where they fly off into unknown certainty. Even though the ending is pretty dark, considering Fran and Flyboy were a couple, I still think that it does have an element of hope. I mean, after all, Fran is pregnant, and new life always represents new beginnings. And we see her and Peter live to fight another day, giving us a feeling that they will do whatever it takes to survive. However, the ending was going to be really, really bleak, as the original ending was to see Peter die by shooting himself, and Fran was to also self-terminate by walking into the helicopter blades, which was to chop up her head. However, thankfully it was decided to change this grim ending. But there does seem to be ambiguity as to whether or not the scene was shot. Although it was in the original script, Romero claimed that the scene was changed before filming had commenced. But there are conflicting images of what is said to be the dummy of the Fran character being put together and then destroyed for that alternative ending, so who knows? The head that was used for the Fran dummy would be changed and altered and used for the scene at the start of the movie where the man's head explode during the SWAT raid. So yeah, the next time you see that shot and you see that head, remember that was originally designed to be the character Fran's head. Number 3, Official and Unofficial Sequels So in 1978, the same year that Dawn of the Dead came out, there was already something of an alternative sequel to the original Night of the Living Dead. That being a book called Return of the Living Dead. The book was written by John Russo, who co-wrote Night of the Living Dead with Romero, and due to a copyright clause, he was allowed to use the title Living Dead, and Romero wasn't, which is why Dawn of the Dead wasn't called Dawn of the Living Dead. Russo's book itself would be adapted into a movie in 1985, which was very loosely based on the book, as in not really based on it at all, and that itself would lead into its own film series. But it doesn't end there, as Dawn of the Dead was initially released in Italy under Dario Argento, with it naturally being a hit there, where the movie was retitled to Zombie. So giving its success in Italy, Italian director Lucio Fulci made an unofficial Italian sequel called Zombie 2, which was released in 1979. And it was very successful, and has gone on to be a celebrated horror classic in its own right. However, the movie was considered extremely violent, Yep, Zombie 2 is full of blood, boobs, bums, and zombies. <laughs> so it really is quite a perfect movie when you think about it. However, the British didn't think so, where in 1980 it was added to the video nasty list and was subsequently banned. Yep, this VHS tape that I'm holding in my hand could have given me six months in prison if I was caught with it in the UK during the 80s. And of course, the zombie movies would skewer off into its own franchise. Dawn of the Dead would go on to get official sequels in Romero's Dead series, including Day of the Dead, Land of the Dead, Diary of the Dead, and Survival of the Dead. However, in 2004, Dawn of the Dead was remade by director Zack Snyder. This remake, unlike most remakes, was actually embraced by horror fans and would go on to get its own fan base. Although, I prefer the original, as to me, the sequel didn't have the charm or flair of the original and just felt like every other zombie movie of its time. And it just felt more unpleasant and morbid and just wasn't as fun. But I do respect that a lot of people do love it. Snyder would go on to direct Army of the Dead in 2021, which was claimed to be a spiritual successor to his 2004 Dawn of the Dead remake. Dawn of the Dead's sequel, Day of the Dead, would also go on to get a remake, and it would, <laughs> you guessed it, go on to get its own film series. Seriously, how many franchises are there now associated with this original series? 
a sequel to a remake of a sequel. And that's not to mention all the other Night of the Living Dead remakes and spin-offs. There are plenty. Wow! This film series went in many different directions and tangents, didn't it? With so many different franchises and sequels and remakes going off in their own direction. It's kind of difficult keeping up with them all. Number two, no ratings today, thank you. So there are actually three different versions of the original Dawn of the Dead. There's Dario Argento's cut, which was released in Europe, which ran for 119 minutes, the George A. Romero US cut, which stood at 126 minutes, and then a director's cut, which consists of 139 minutes. And it's said that all these different versions use alternative angles and takes of the same scenes, to give each version a slightly different tone. Now when it comes to the US release of Dawn of the Dead, the MPAA gave it an X rating due to its graphic violence. This posed a problem for Romero, as he didn't want to make cuts to his movie, but he also didn't want to release it with an X rating, as X rated movies often performed poorly in the box office. So Romero came up with a brilliant idea. Just release Dawn of the Dead without a rating, problem solved, and that's exactly what happened. A company called United Film Distribution Company released Dawn of the Dead without a rating. However, advertisements of Dawn of the Dead had to come with a disclaimer that the movie contains shocking violence and that no one under 17 should see it. Dawn of the Dead was even refused a classification twice in Australia until it was finally released in 1980, once six minutes worth of footage was cut. When you think about it, it's kind of brave for a movie production to not be happy with a movie classification and then say, fine, we'll just release it without a classification then. <laughs> that is as brazen as a raisin and I like it. And well, the decision really paid off. Sometimes you just have to go against the grain. Number one, Dawn of the Box Office. Dawn of the Dead was released as Zombie in September 1978 in Italy, and then released in April 1979 in the US as Dawn of the Dead. And it was very financially successful, making $66 million on its mere $640,000 budget. What is attributed to its success is both word of mouth and its advertising campaign, which declared, quote, the most intensely shocking motion picture experience of all ages. Almost as if the movie was so shocking and grotesque, people just had to go and see it for themselves. The movie got positive reviews from critics, who loved its inventiveness and broader scope and scale, along with the character development and performances also being praised. Although it wasn't all entirely positive. Some did have issues with its gore and violence, with a critic from the New York Times saying that she had to leave after 15 minutes, as she has issues with flesh-eating zombies. Um... Okay, well I guess it's a good thing she went and saw a movie that was about, you know, flesh-eating zombies. And a critic for NBC Today referred to it as Yawn of the Dead. But other than that, its reviews were genuinely positive, and the fans of the genre definitely loved it. Dawn of the Dead has gone on to become a vastly celebrated horror movie. Some even claim it to be the quintessential zombie movie and over the years it has attracted many fans, including Simon Pegg, who would use it for inspiration to make Shaun of the Dead. I would definitely say that it's in the top 10 of best horror movies of the 1970s, and it's one of those rare occasions where a movie sequel is probably better than its original, up there with the likes of Empire Strikes Back and Terminator 2. It feels way more epic than Night of the Living Dead, and really expands on that world and turns it up to 11. It honestly feels like a big epic adventure, and I also really like how it adds humour and fun with its comic book style, making it a very enjoyable movie. It's like the movie is saying, yeah, Night of the Living Dead was a really dark and morbid movie, but what the heck, this time we're just gonna have fun. And the movie definitely is fun, and I think the shopping mall setting really adds to that. That was a great idea, hit out of the park by George A. Romero, and an interesting contrast to the isolated farmhouse setting of the first movie. Dawn of the Dead is without a doubt my favourite zombie movie. I just love its satire, setting, and action, and characters, who throughout the film, I always find that I'm growing with them and really care about them. It's a movie which no matter how many times I watch it, it never gets old or boring. It's like going on a long journey with these survivors during a zombie apocalypse, and trying to survive with them. It all feels very personal. 
Unlike his standard zombie flick, it's also very bright and colourful, and unapologetically camp when it wants to be, and unapologetically dark and morbid when it needs to be, and a really fun and nerve-wracking adventure. Dawn of the Dead 1978 really is the perfect zombie movie. Dawn of the Dead is one of those movies that you at least have to see once, just so you can say you've watched it and experienced it. Now, the movie has aged, and it does feel a bit 1970s kish, but to me, that just adds to its charm and appeal anyway. It looks and feels very retro, but in a good way. Anyway, I'm Minty, and seriously, I want to see a movie about drunk zombie extras who steal a golf cart and crash it. <laughs> see ya! I'm not gonna lie, I really like this soundtrack. My favourite song is that really cool one. You know, the one that goes